if you want to turn cameras off, that's fine. Um, but I'm going. I need to uh, record this so I can post this later. Um, make sure your first name and last name are your ID if you can. Uh, Theodore, I got you. Um, so uh, again, we're looking at how we go from shapes into forms, uh, and and sort of what what does that mean? So we're going to look at today. We're going to try something new uh, today in the class. I've got a um, a um, Oh, what are they called? Jam board that we're going to try to do something with today. I want to just do a little experimental thing. And so we'll take a look at today's lesson. Uh, I want to have plenty of time at the end of class to uh, play around with the jam board idea. And um, it's just an experiment. And so uh, we'll see how it goes. All right. Well, watch the lesson. And I might interrupt myself uh, during the lesson. Just to, if, if you have questions, please put them in the chat uh, and I'll answer them in real time. Talking about shapes again, and we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, Bridget Riley here. <clears throat> Artists have so long uh, have so many choices when creating works of art. Um, before we go in for that, just want to make sure uh, I've, I've hooked up a new set, setup here. Of uh, and can you hear the audio that I'm right now when I'm talking? And is it good and clear? Just a yes. That'd be great. Awesome. Thank you, Cooper. I appreciate that. And can you hear the audio on the video? And is it clear? Awesome. Thank you. Just want to make sure. And we talked a little bit uh, earlier uh, last week about geometric shapes, those shapes like squares and triangles and rectangles and circles. We talked about organic shapes, like those irregular shapes like clouds and trees and rocks and things you might find in nature. <coughs> Today they start talking about irregular shapes, and I'm gonna be honest, I don't really like the term irregular shapes. These are just geometric shapes. I mean, just organic shapes. Um, irregular shapes that you know they they have a their own little special definition form. Shapes that have an unequal sides and angles, and um, what they're kind of referring here to are hybrid shapes that are that have sides like geometric shapes, but have the rules of an organic shape, if that makes sense. And um, I don't love the term, though. I just generally think of those as organic shapes. So you can check out some of these irregular shapes. These these are these are I mean geometric shapes. These are just plain old geometric shapes. Now they're calling them irregular geometric shapes because their angles aren't exactly square, sides aren't exactly square, not the same length, and that sort of thing. And so, <clears throat> when you're looking at those and how you can identify them and, and sort of pick them out, they're looking at how you can recognize some of those geometric shapes that maybe end differently. If you'll notice, this triangle has sort of this rounded edge, and that, that kind of makes it an irregular shape. But I'm going to be honest, I don't love the whole term irregular shapes. But um, we do want to talk about shapes with dimension because anytime we have a a, a shape uh, that has dimension to it and a third dimension added to it, well, it's now a form, and I'll show you what I mean. <laughs> if I have a single post-it note, a single post-it note has width. I can draw my finger across the width of it. It has height, so it has two dimensions. Height is one dimension, width is one dimension. But if we turn it sideways and look at the depth, it doesn't really have any depth. It's just one single piece of post-it note wide or thick. <clears throat> so it doesn't really have any thickness, if you will. So that no depth, that's that third dimension. If I have, however, a stack of post-it notes, well, now I still have the width and the length, but now I also have depth the third dimension it goes back into space a little bit and so think about those are the three dimensions that we talked about how high is it how tall how wide how deep that sort of thing um <clears throat> so when we look at, at three dimensional shapes and 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 they're talking about short shapes that have length height and width um we're going to change the names of those shapes um, so a a circle becomes a sphere 
A circle is a two-dimensional shape. A sphere, like a ball, is a three-dimensional form. It's a shape that's gone three-dimensional. It's now called a form. If we have a square and we add depth to the square, just like you see here, a square is just height and width. But when we add, I mean, height and length. But when we add width, we get, and length and height, all three together, we get a cube, a three-dimensional cube, which is now a form. <laughs> so we need to kind of understand, and we're going to talk about that most of today, the idea of, of, of um, turning shapes into forms. And that's what we're going to focus on this week. We're going to move our uh, optical illusions back to next week. This week, we're going to be looking at how we convert shapes into the the idea of form, is make them look three-dimensional. So we want to know the secrets have that just don't tell. Uh, they trick you. Just when you thought I'd master, or just when I thought I'd master the differences between two-dimensional and three-dimensional shapes, I find out that artists can create the illusion of a three-dimensional shape. So this is a two-dimensional geometric shape uh, work of art by um, Alskowiz. Hmm, I'm not really good at that one. <laughs> uh, Richard Alskowiz. It's an example of a flat two-dimensional work of art. The artwork is created using many squares and only has two dimensional, two, two dimensions, height and width. But it looks like it's got some depth. It kind of the way he's used that. That the, his his values made it made it look like it had depth to it. This is a two dimensional irregular shape, a work of art by K uh, Kandinsky. Uh, it's flat, only has length and height. Um, if you look closely, you can spot the geometric and irregular shapes in this artwork. Sure, there's tons of them in there. Look at those are regular shapes. An illusion of a three dimensional shape. Again, you can create the impression that these are going back into space. When you draw that cube from a square into a cube, you add that third dimension, it automatically starts adding that illusion of depth. And last but not least, three dimensional artwork. Uh, this is a cube piece, and you can see it's got uh, a three dimensional piece that uses uh, the illusion of cubes as well as being an actual three-dimensional thing that has uh, width in it as well. So it's it's both an illusion and, and an actual thing. So if we look here at this surface, this surface is sort of flat, but we've got all these different shapes uh, and different values, if you will, this shape and this shape and this shape. And when they do that, they create that illusion that that is a three-dimensional shape when we can tell this is an actual three-dimensional shape over here. It's kind of strange. I love that sculpture. <clears throat> Just like uh, you create your own pattern using two-dimensional geometric shapes, pattern can also be created by repeating irregular shapes. Before you continue your shape adventure, you can practice creating your own pattern using the new shapes you learned about by completing this activity. We're not going to complete this activity. Um, we're not going to do all the, uh, the regular uh, shape activity from this module. If you want to do it at home, the module is there. You're more than welcome to. But we want to move on um, uh, and make sure we get in today talking about uh, transforming shapes into forms because that's what we're going to be looking at doing on our Thursday meeting. So creating the illusion of a three-dimensional shape on a two-dimensional surface, like a piece of paper, may seem complicated, but it's actually quite simple. All you have to do is follow a, sh a, a sh few short steps and you'll be on your way. So um, we're looking at uh, how you take a square and convert it into a cube. So what they're showing you here is what we call the, an offset square. They drew one square, and then down a little lower to the left, they drew another square. And then when they create, connected the three sides, or the sides that you could see, and erased that little middle part there where you couldn't see through the cube, so you erase that, then you're left with that cube. Now, before they erase it, it's like if you're looking at a clear cube, like imagine a little box made of glass. That's what it looks like now. 
when you're doing a triangle, this one's a little, well, a little more difficult, I, in my personal opinion. And, and I don't love the way they did it, but uh, you can see they added that third leg, and it kind of goes back into space. And uh, it really comes towards us, that, that third leg, and it makes that pyramid kind of come out in our direction. So studio time, we're going to be talking a little bit about this week uh, on Thursday about how you create the illusion of these three dimensional shapes and, and whether it's a square, uh, whether it's a um, um, cube, whether it's a sphere, whether it's a triangle, a pyramid, a cone, um, a cylinder, these are all three-dimensional types of shapes and we want to look at how we create those that illusion um, we talked last week about uh, Bridget Ryland if you remember Bridget did those black and white images that appeared as if they were going back into space and so we're gonna look um, <coughs> at um, uh, we're gonna look more at organic uh, a little bit um, quickly uh, organic dimensions, just like geometric and irregular shapes, organic shapes can be found in two-dimensional and three-dimensional works of art. For an organic shape to have form, it needs to have all three dimensions, which are length, width, and height. Do you think the organic shapes of this artwork are two-dimensional or 3D? Well, these all look pretty 2D over here. This one's starting to get a little more 3D, but it's pretty flat. And there's also, they start talking about the idea of kinetic sculpture. So... Think about a three-dimensional sculpture. It's got three dimensions, height and width and depth. If we think of like a, uh, um, um, a sculpture that can have movement, um, we're talking about a, a sculpture that has elements or pieces or parts that either by motor or by wind or by you touch it or movement, somehow they move. Uh, they're designed to move. So we often think of uh, three-dimensional sculptures like stone carvings, and they just sit there like big pieces of rock. But kinetic sculptures are three-dimensional uh, works of art that do something. They, they move and, and they, they are interactive in some way. Uh, and so this artwork is an example of how organic shapes can be used to create three-dimensional works. In this wavy organic shape sculpture, it's called a kinetic sculpture. Uh, it's a type of art that moves um, and so these these little pieces individually can kind of move on their own, which and it's really neat if you can see it actually in movement. Um, real quick, I want to take a look if I have if we can find it. There's a really neat piece. There we go. That's it right there. So these are very, uh, so this is, you can see the kinetic sculpture in motion. See it actually moving. <clears throat> and that's the wind makes those those pieces inside of it turn. Uh, and uh, the pieces kind of rotate inside and go outside of it. Each one of these is an individual little arm that rotates. So it creates this illusion of like this flower blooming. There's lots of different examples uh, of different types of kinetic sculpture. I'm going to stop it there just for a second. Um, <clears throat> I love kinetic sculptures. Um, if you ever get a chance in Chicago, they have some of the really, uh, some amazing uh, different sculptures uh, in um, various different galleries. But one of my favorites is the uh, Museum of Contemporary Art. And it's it's got what we call, uh, or, or we got, uh, it's called a um, mobile, but it's a piece by Alexander Calder. And Calder was one of my favorite uh, sculptors. He would make these big floating sculptures that, and they would hang from the ceiling, but they would, they would seem to just float in the air and slowly move around. And so their kinetic movement was sort of based like this one on the wind and the movement in the air and the, in the, in the, uh, uh, the gallery where it was uh, where it hanging, but it was constantly in slow motion uh, moving around. And kinetic sculptures are, are really cool. But it's a, it's a really interesting um, look at a lot of these make use of that two-dimensional shape that when they put into motion, they start creating uh, forms with. It's kind of neat.
Okay, let's see. Uh, oh, this is this is that sculpture. So we can see sculptures of images moving up and down. These these are all on little uh, wires, and they're controlled by computers. And oh. um, these types of kinetic sculptures use individual pieces that move independently of each other, but collectively make one big image. And you can see sometimes it looks like it's rain, but sometimes they make, they can uh, make it look like it's a car. It can take the shape of a car. It can take the shape of a, of um, waves. You can see it making waves there. <clears throat> but kinetic sculpture is designed to move in some way. All right. <clears throat> when creating a work of art using shapes, artists use other elements of art as well. In this artwork, the artists use many elements of art, uh, like line, shape, color, space, to create the unified work of, of art. These elements work together to create harmony in the piece. Harmony is when everything works together and looks like it belongs together and nothing stands out nothing uh as, as nothing stands out as being uh in the wrong place looks like everything belongs together and then everything works together like it's supposed to um so we're going to stop with uh, identifying these different types of shapes uh you should by now be able to identify those geometric shapes you should be able to identify organic shapes Know a little bit about irregular shapes. You already know I don't care about irregular that much. <laughs> but three-dimensional shapes. What's a three-dimensional shape? And and we're going to start calling three-dimensional shapes forms because a form is a three-dimensional shape. And all right. And so I'm going to stop it there. I want to show you all. Um, <clears throat> minimize that. So what we're going to be looking at uh, on. Uh, our make day. I get my day straight. I have to remember what grades I'm teaching. Uh, on Thursday, when we do our make day, we're going to be looking at how we can use um, value, uh, maybe some texture, that sort of thing. But we're going to try to create the impression of a three dimensional form on a two dimensional space. So if you have a piece of paper with just a pencil, is all you really need, or, or you can use, uh, I'll do my demonstration, of course, on Canvas or something. Um, but what we're going to look at is sort of what we've got here on this uh, on the screen now. Um, uh, the shape being a two-dimensional area, recognizable boundary. It's really easy. It's very, and again, flat. The form is that three-dimensional thing. Now, when we think about that, that form, that, you know, the circle becomes that sphere, right? The, the circle looks like a circle over here, but now when we when we've got a three dimension, it becomes a form. What we want to think about is how can we draw and, and create the impression that that is really a form that we're looking at. That's really a three dimensional thing. And so this this kind of little progression here shows you a generally how you're going to think about the light that the object is capturing. Um, and that kind of makes it look three dimensional. And that's what we're going to look at um, um, on Thursday, our make day. We're going to take a look at how we can uh, take a circle and make a sphere out of it, how we can take a square and, and draw a cube out of it. Um, we may do a cone or a cylinder, um, uh, maybe a, um, a pyramid, even. You know, I don't like doing the pyramid as much. It's not as. I'd rather do the cone. It, if you get the, yeah, I understand the cone and the pyramid are very similar, but instead of having the straight angles, the cone has that rounded. So when we draw it in three dimensions, it has more of a, a transition of the gray because the light on it transitions a little softer. So this is sort of kind of what we're going to be looking to draw. How can we use line value, line to create value, um, and then use that value to show the light, the net light that represents the the uh, idea that the, that's a form. So I said we were going to try something new today. And so this is just an experiment. And I'm not uh, good at using Jamboard yet. I've, um, I made a little thing that shows you how to use it. And then I don't even use it very much. So I'm going to I'm going to put the Jamboard up here and I'll put the link in the do I have it up already? Look, y'all probably laugh at me going. It's already up there, Mr. McGuire. Well, we have to type it up here. And me, 
did I do my? Oh, there it is. That's what I want. All right. Using your mouse or using your, um, uh, I think I just copied this and put it in the link there. I did this earlier and I think it worked. I think you just click that link. Is that right? If you click that link, it should bring you, yay. And using, uh, I'm gonna split screen here so you can see what I'm saying. Using your mouse or your, um, if you have a, whoop, if you have a, uh, um, uh, a stylus or a drawing pad or something that you're drawing on, <laughs> you can certainly use that. But I would like for you just to try and draw something in one of the, there are five slides, so not everybody has to be on the same slide. Uh, if you look up here, there are multiple slides. You can choose a slide. And then what I would like for you to do is just to the best of your ability, go up here and choose the little pin and just draw one of the shapes as a form. And then if you want to, if you will, try to write your name or initials or something on the inside of it. If that makes sense, just choose any one of them. There's several different ones. All right, squiggly, squiggly. Try to draw a box best you can. Oh, okay. All right. I like that. That's a, I see a pyramid looking good. And it's okay if you draw on somebody else's this first time. I mean, we'll try not to. And you can choose a different page. It gets a lot of control. I love this though. I really like being able to go see. Me. Okay, look, guys, you can choose two, three, four, five. I think you can choose any of them. And then we'll flip through and see what everybody draws. It was drawing. There we go. <laughs> I wish the little, does the little pin tell me who? Oh, my goodness. The little face on the pin is so tiny. Yeah. And so uh, this is neat. I could probably open up several of these. That is really cool. So as experiments go, this one has made my day. Um, we're going to think about how you can draw and, um, this kind of gives me an idea of, uh, <laughs> this is great. This is so cool. All right. Very good. Oh, that's great. That's coming on great. So you're getting that, that, that three dimensional and I don't know what you're drawing with there, but that's pretty good. That's better than I was doing with my stylus. Oh, we're drawing that one right now. Nice control. Very nice control. All right. That's on two. <laughs> One's gotten out of control crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Yoshi, I like that beer, man. That's great. You guys have done some good stuff. Again, if you want to draw some more, keep trying. You can go to these, these last few pages. Don't have very many students at all. Can I add a page? Oh, look. I just added extra pages. Look at that. Yeah, I'm going over to nine and 10 if you want to get crazy. Choose color. Uh, if you want to color it in, fill it in, you, you know, kind of play with that. Uh, we got two minutes left as far as I'm concerned. Uh, roll has been taken. I think I got everybody. You guys have a great day. I appreciate you playing along, experiment with me. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on Thursday, but we're going to try to do this in class and make uh, make some forms. Have a great day. That is awesome. Let me go back and look at these. Bye, guys. See you all. Very good. Y'all did such a good job. That's excellent. Oh, Jamboard's my new favorite thing. That's excellent. Bye, guys. I think it's interesting how uh, it kind of goes away uh, when you I don't know who is drawn with that green pen um, and what the difference between it is. So what was the difference between drawing with the green pen and drawing with that red pen that uh, that stays? I'm going to go to a different page. Lord, I made all kinds of pages. Go over to 24. I guess I better play around with the experiment a little bit. Oh, you've got different things. Oh, I like that. Paintbrush. All right. Ugh. 
Does it have a size adjustment? Yeah, that that's my favorite. I wish it had a size and opacity adjustment, sort of like. But that's pretty good. All right, guys. Have a good day. Is it just me and my little web? So I'm talking to myself. See you, Chris. Bye, Chris. Have a great day.